Okay, before we get into uh, plugins or anything like that, here is my recommendation. Whether you are writing your own application, a plugin for some system, library for use, if you're a beginner and you have decided that you are okay dealing with all of the solution and PC project shenanigans and all of that, you will bump into a number of things where you're simply uncertain about the language and unlike uh, Lua, Python, Ruby Mill, whatever, you don't really have that fast interaction loop uh, where you have the comfort of an interpreter or a show where you can just toss stuff in and see what happens. C++ needs a build. Um, and it might not be that easy to um, test something in the actual environment that you're in, that you're playing with, uh, isolate the unit of execution and so on. Now, the other stumbling block that constantly comes up for people is that in most interpreted languages, you can just grab something and print it and it will give you some reasonable interpretation of what you're printing. Again, that is not the case for C++ because it deals uh, with uh, a type of strict typing and all of that, that just, it's simply not possible to do it in the language. So regardless of the fact that, you know, maybe we'll make this into DLLs or we'll pick something from the dev kit, whatever, it is absolutely harmless and very useful if right away, you know, as you have something, you create yourself a side project where you go empty project, it's going to be an executable and you call it a uh, test exit or something like that. And we're going to get right into the bugging for these. Instead of create new solution, if you do add to solution, it will add it to your local solution, um, which is going to be your Maya nodes. Empty project is fine. Now, what happens here, it might take a little bit. <laughs> now you have something that you can play with. If these were already configured to DLL and so on, they'd be pretty hard to play with. Debugging them also requires that you attach to Maya if you're running a plugin. Uh, or in general, whenever you load library, it's normally gonna be attached to some other process. So that can get a little bit trickier. Uh, learning to debug is super important. When it comes to C++, learning to use the debugger is practically necessary because it makes it so hard to do print debugging, especially for newcomers. So with all of that said, what we're gonna do in here is simply add ourselves a CPP file, no headers or anything like that. Uh, we can call it whatever you want. Let's go for app CPP. We're gonna stick to our original theme. And all you need here, you don't need to know, I mean, you probably want to look it up, it'd be healthy, but if you do this and you save it, now it might be tough to see, I don't know, it will depend on your resolution and all of that. This is in bold and this is not. So now if I go in here and I build this, it will probably succeed. But if I want to run anything here and I run local Windows debugger, um, it might not do anything relevant um, depending on how things are going. Uh, remember that building and running something might not necessarily be the same thing. So let me check for a second. Normally I do all of these with shortcuts. And project only, there you go. You can do all kinds of stuff where you can build only test C, clean, link, and so on. Build full program database file, not what you want. But there you go, set a startup project. If you do that, these, whenever you open these solution, this is gonna be the starter project. And whenever you run something, um, native only is gonna be fine, or you can leave it to alt and it will go to native only for this. Now, once you run the debugger, this is what you're gonna get. Why am I mentioning this? Because if you were to do print debugging, maybe you learn how printf works and so on, you, you still have an exceptionally hard time to learn these things. Whereas let's say that you're learning about pointers and you're learning how pointers work and all of that, you could do something like, okay, I have an int a equal five. Uh, I have uh, an int pointer. Ah, that auto correction throws me off. You have an int pointer of sorts and it's gonna be pointing to uh, the address of a, so, but you know, I have an idea of what I'm doing. So this works for me. Um, but let's say that you made a mistake. You did that. Now, here, 
and this is why I suggest using an IDE, right away will tell you where an error is. And it tells you a value of type int, let me see, a value of type int cannot be used to initialize an entity of type int asterisk, which means a pointer. Now, if you know not C++, this is gonna be bloody obvious, but if you're a beginner and this is a slightly more complex case, um, you know, what happens here might help you a lot. Like you're gonna get a compiler error, you can look at the error release, you can double click something. Uh, this thing, just, uh, I want to get rid of it, why? Anyway, go away. No, not gonna go away. Anyway, uh, initializing cannot convert from int to int asterisk. So bring it back in, okay, you get your error, cool. Now, if you don't quite know, if something is just compiling, but it's not running the way you expected and so on, that's where a compiler comes in. You can set a breakpoint. Uh, in this case, I will probably want to set it at the return. Now, setting a breakpoint, we stop execution as soon as that line is encountered. So this is not gonna be running. Uh, if you want to see what is contained in there, you want to set a breakpoint on something afterwards. And we're going to get into what these mean. Um, I will want to run the x64 version of these, I assume. I will normally not have a 32 at all, and we're going to go into that as well. Now, I can build. Uh, the build was already in place, probably. Ah, there you go. So it's building the 64-bit version. And now, with F5, I can actually run it. And before, that window will pop up and just close and go away. Uh, because my application was not doing anything. So in a lot of books, they will tell you, oh, add, you know, something like STDCIN so that you can get an input. And, and everything is based on text. And it's a terrible way to teach programming. And it's a terrible way to explore a language and, um, and a suit that you don't know. So what is going on here with the debugger? And this is going to be super tiny, but run it yourself. Figure, you know, figure it out. Get to play with it a little bit. Is you can look at provided you have the debug symbols and all of it and so you want to compile in the bug mode you can get to look at what variables contain so if you look at autos it will try and do its best to look at local scope and go like hey these are the things you might be interested in it's telling you okay a contains this thing and you can also choose to see hexadecimal or actual values and you go okay pa um, what is this funky thing? Well, it's a pointer, so it's an address in memory. Now, it, it goes a step further and it tells you, hey, the contents of what it's pointing to are such and such, and then you can expand it and see that. Now, let me stop that execution. If I had actually broken here, if you're studying something, this is, you know, practically priceless. I mean, this is great to learn languages and so on. So if you go in locals, you can see that a in example and this is what i was talking about a has a value of five but you got to pa and that's got zero x and a bunch of c's that is in the bug mode that basically means it's a null pointer it's you know it's not being it's not yeah it's a null pointer it's not even being initialized and that's because we stopped uh these these exist you know will exist but it's um, the breakpoint stopped it before it actually got a sign uh, if this was a genuine bug because you, by some circumstance, you had not set that pointer to anything relevant, this is how you get to figure out. This is how you can deal with these things without having to point at anything. And then you learn the rest of debugging. Now, that is um, a little bit too far. Uh, if we start going in there, we're just teaching you to find your way around, learn things, and set up a build. But the reason I'm saying all of this is that um, you really need to learn to debug and attach processes and so on as soon as possible. It is very good to have something very quick where you can sketch simple crap when you're trying to figure out, oh, do I put an ampersand or an asterisk? What do I do? Have something like this. Uh, take advantage of the fact that you can have multiple projects inside a solution. If you're coping with it, uh, you might as well take advantage of it. And that's it. So again, a bit belabored, but I wanted to get that across before we start configuring something else. It's always good to have a quick Excel that you can play with in your project, uh, sorry, in your solution available. Uh, and then you'll do something else. You know, you move on to the nodes that you actually want to work with. All right, so let's have a look at an actual example of a DLL next.